Hello, welcome back to the last episode of School Days. Heck yeah, we made it, friends. We made it. Despite everything from this year, we made it. All right, um, let's get started. We're going to dive into our introductions because I totally remember how to do this. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Parr, how are you doing today? Hey there, Matt. Doing pretty good. How about you? No, I'm making it. Making it nice. Uh, school days. For the last time, I will be playing Raphael Chiclana, Wrath the One. Uh, in a bit of an interesting situation now with Raph. As his Doom has arrived, I'm using the Doomed playbook as well. Heck yeah. Nikki, how you doing? Hi, everyone. Um, I play Star. Um, I'm never going to get good at this, so. <laughs> <laughs> Unless somebody, like, it was like, like a script, but I would forget to write it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, just tune in and enjoy. All right. Stace, how are you today? Oh, pretty good. Not so bad. Uh, survived another week, right? Almost the weekend. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I play Hacktivist, whose real name is Margo. Yeah, that was temporary, temporarily forgetting who I play in this game. Um, yeah, so Margo, codenamed Hacktivist, the Scion playbook uh, from the game. She is a sullen, semi-rebellious teenager who can control machines and has some electrokinesis and mostly she just likes chaos leland how are you doing tonight i'm doing just dandy for the most part especially now that this has started um hey everyone i'm leland uh slash leopold the just you i am gonna be playing stone strike the metal Stone Strike the Metal. That's his. That's his new uh, hero <laughs> name. Uh, just kidding. It's just Stone Strike. Still, he tried it for like a few seconds, and then Wrath told him it wouldn't make for good branding, and so he, he cut it out. Uh, but anyway, no. Uh, Stone Strike is uh, a metalhead teenager who is slowly but surely being transformed into a big, brutish, unstoppable all-powerful uh, stone earth elemental um, and uh, he this whole season he's been tempted to the dark side but he resisted through the righteousness of metal uh, and he has got some uh, he's got like some man of war maybe some iron maiden playing or something and now like instead of just like his usual uh, black or death metal affair which you know was kind of represented his dark side but now that he's like definitely a hero he's, he's listening to some more you know 80s power metal so that's kind of where he's at mentally all right that's uh that's a narrative uh all Kat. relevant hi i'm cat um i also made it through the week unlike some people um which would have been like a really hilarious joke if uh, like uh, my grandfather died last week. So uh, that's what that's referring to. And I like to deal with death with humor. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> now that that's embarrassing, um, I play ID IDK. <laughs> oh, ASDF, WTF, IDK, AFK. Um, an alien from another planet who is also embarrassingly weird and uh can't introduce themselves and that's it <laughs> very cool very cool and i am matt the gm i play everybody else uh on this on this uh this wonderful train wreck we have of super teens colliding uh now with eldritch gods i guess uh things may have gone slightly off the rails but you know that just 
the best part of the minecart ride is when it goes off the rails. Uh, so let's dive in to where we're at in our story. Uh, when last we left everybody, uh, Raph the One had revealed his uh, doom. His body had been taken over by an eternal supervillain who had hopped into a car that still had the red neon ninja in it and driven away, leaving leaving y'all, the four of y'all, uh, standing on the beach with the uh, fiery silhouette projection that had been known as Wrath the Second. Oh, also, there's some sort of Cthulhu in the bay behind you, but, you know, your teammate Again. just may have died. <laughs> Whatevs. I want to. Can I put my hand through Wrath? Like, can I? Can I try to touch Wrath to see if they're just a ghost? Uh, Wrath is is that a good decision? Uh, <laughs> wow. I I think I think the hand goes through, but if it's not a. Uh, it's not like a smooth pass through. Like you, you put the hand and then it suddenly is like your hands in molasses. So it just slows down, and kind of sinks in. Oh, I, I immediately withdraw my hand as soon as I get that, that sensation. And I just start like wiggling my hand, like trying to get, get it off. <laughs> Wipe it on my pants a little bit. Oh, well, this is lovely. So what are you guys, what are y'all going to do? So are you the real Wrath? I am a Wrath. Whether I'm real or not, I mean, my current state would certainly make me question it. This is really weird. Just saying. Yes, yes, it is. So, what was uh, what happened to, what just happened? A very old supervillain, who has been living inside my body, stole my body, and drove away. What the hell? Okay, yeah, that's definitely really weird. Yep. Is this someone's ass we're going to have to kick? Because we've gotten pretty good at kicking ass these days. Can you get your body back? I, I have no clue how I would even start such a process. Well, how did they steal it? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm supposing it might have been one of his powers to sort of latch on like a parasite and basically build a power in my body until he could take it over or just get rooted in. Mind if I clarify something? Uh, sure. Okay, yeah, I'm just wondering, so did like Wrath number one like walk away or did like does he still have all his stuff on him? Because if so, maybe we can like track your cell phone or something. I, well, I didn't take anything off as I was not expecting to be in this situation. So what he's done now, I don't know. He can feel me, but I cannot feel him. Oh. Yeah. Well, I guess we need to let um, let everyone know like the adults mostly like who run this operation know to keep an eye out for uh, for another raft well to do that we need to take the business at end definitely and with that 
there is a rumble under the ground beneath y'all again. The earth has been tremoring uh, off and on since y'all started ruining uh, ritual sites. And there it goes again. The grounds are rumbling. Can I look at the ground and say, Ahem, we're, we're having a moment right now. We don't, we don't need your bullshit right now. There's a polite cough. Just, oh, sorry. I'll just, just be over. <laughs> no, what actually happens is the ground rumbles harder. <laughs> this, is, this is bad timing. Please. Just, just a moment. Do we know what's you going can all on? just you can all just picture an an elder an elder tour thing just like I'll just be in the corner y'all call me when you're ready for the <laughs> climactic showdown. <laughs> do we need uh, me to start? Do we need me to start digging a hole or something? I think it's time we return to the tree, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I got a little distracted earlier as I was just, you know, in an all-out bloodthirsty rage, smashing everything of which I just recovered from. So, jeez, yeah, let's go take care of a tree or whatever. I really have no idea what's going on. I just let we... me know what to smash. <laughs> so y'all, uh, y'all are y'all are gonna start heading back over to a tree to the tree. Uh, man, it's been a minute since y'all have had the spare concentration to really not be focusing on rituals and beating down a bunch of a bunch of like golem things and and then like eldritch horror -y things and then your buddy died maybe and it's been a minute um there's something weird about the tree does it look like it's uh withering no that's not the right word Melting is probably a more accurate word. Trees aren't yeah. supposed to melt. I mean, I haven't been on this planet for a very long time, but I'm pretty sure trees don't melt. Yeah, like WTF, you are right. They don't melt. Not, not, sap is probably involved. It's more just like, have you ever seen one of those like really intricately detailed like candle sculptures? Oh, like the carved candles? Yeah. 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 Now I got one behind me. Like now take I, one of those yeah. and imagine it sitting out in a one hundred degree summer heat, like in the open on the sidewalk. Just everything's just starting to go boo. Now is this humid heat or is this like not so humid heat? Is there even or like arid heat? Like is it dry heat or is it wet heat? It doesn't matter. I'm just being ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, my illustration would have been dry heat because I live in Texas, and that's the only kind I know outside of Houston, uh, which is just hell. Um, but up here in Neon City, it would probably be a wet heat. There's an ocean right there. Oh, yeah. This is like on the Northeast, right? Yeah. Like Maryland for some reason. That's it as was, good a place as any. And it wasn't that heat earlier, right? Oh, oh no, no, no. It's not, not. It has not actually gotten hotter. That's just Kat and I are messing around with this illustration too much. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying we're going to have some stinky teenagers here in a sec. I mean, look, there's an ocean. Y'all can take a swim. <laughs> well, most of y'all can. Some of y'all might short out. Of course. No. I might just dissipate all together. Yeah. Well, listen, just use me like a missile. Point me into the direction you need me to kill things, and I'll take care of it. Um, Let's figure this out otherwise, though. All right, so this tree's melted, or is melting? Melting. Okay. We need to find out what's causing it. How far are we away from the tree? And, um, space is relative. Um, y'all, y'all can get back there pretty quickly. Okay, you can start touch it. 
Oh, oh no, it's out in the bay. Oh, okay. but y'all can get back over to that bridge to get over to it pretty quickly. Do you have like a drone or something, Hacktivist? Oh yeah. Um, I was thinking about assessing the situation. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness, I thought. Uh, so go ahead and, and roll for that, Matt. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Ooh. Hey. Again, no controller. Sends out hey. All right. So with a 10, um, let's see. What what are you focusing on, Hacktivist? What are what are what's kind of your first instinct? What am I checking out? Well, there's like there's the Cthulhu monster, right? And there's the yep. tree which contained the rituals. It's just more like Really? Hacktivist is trying to figure out if she even needs to be concerned about the tree. Okay. Okay. Um, so you like shoot your drone out. It goes and flies like a big circle just looking at everything. Um, hey, there's something weird. There's something kind of weird. You, you, you rem- you've seen like tentacles come out of this bay. But like you cycle through a couple different filters on your drone. There doesn't seem to be any like big mass at the bottom of the bay. Like the tentacles aren't attached to a central being. But you know, trees have roots. Oh. And this tree shaped thing is melting. Kind of like back into a blob. You can lead a Let's horse to water, you. Matt. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make me figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the tree might be an elder thing. Oh, it definitely all is. right. <laughs> Activist will share because she's smarter than I am. <laughs> Is it an elder tree? <laughs> I, yes. Just to make that joke even better. Yes, it is. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> what, are so they... are we kicking the shit out of a giant tree now? Or what's happening? Can I read the tree's mind? Oh, no. That's interesting. Um, how do you want to try to do that? Um, by reading its mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, gonna... like I guess I'm going to try and listen to see if I can hear the, the tree. Okay. I'm, I'm going to need you to do an unleash your powers on this one. All right. Oh, that was a 13. Oh, um, Yeah. You can absolutely read this tree's mind. Um, boy, how, uh, how, how, what are you, what are you looking for? You just want to get all of it or are you going to be careful about this or? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just learn all of it. Okay. Um, so IDK has been kind of hovering around y'all participating in all these conversations. IDK is now kind of sprawled on the ground, like actually physically sprawled on the ground, uh, touching the dirt for maybe the first time in their life. Um, <laughs> hey, that's a lot. That thing's that's- old. That thing's weird. Like it's not actually an elder God. We, right. we, we know that. It's just another tree, weapon. which is a lot less interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's thematic. It stays on point. Um, there's a lot going on, and a lot of it is just like this this barely contained rage. Oh. Sort of. Um, so here's here's the biggest thing of what you got from reading its mind the biggest kind of like there's a lot of rage there's a lot of just like knowledge just gathered from being alive in the world for this long like but 
it there were two minds that you can feel and and as soon as you realize that there are two minds you're just kind of like okay uh maybe 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 nightshade has like taking control of it because it's like an elemental thing maybe who knows um but the deeper you go into this thing's mind that's not it in fact it's kind of the opposite so it's controlling nightshade that's sure what it seems like Something huh. is weird in Eon City. So we had a really bad mold problem in Eon City. And we had an elder mold problem in Eon City. And uh, now the mold chickens have come to roost. It... I. There's a better metaphor, but I can't think of it right now. I mean, that's pretty close. That's pretty good. That's a that's a decent way to explain it. How deep do you how how long do you want to spend in this thing's mind? Um, because you can feel you can feel it. You can go deeper, especially with that role. You can go deeper. Um. I want to find the source. Like I'm, I'm really not interested in that little kid who who dumped his ice cream cone like two weeks ago. Okay. Like I saw that it was cute, but like, um, the kid was really, really sad. There was a lot of tears, but I don't. I'm, I'm kind of speeding past those moments. Okay. I'm trying to find like so, a source. I need. Um, okay. Okay, you are going to be able to read this thing's mind. I would like you to just roll me a D6. This is more or less a straight up and down kind of dumb luck roll. Okay. Uh, one D6. Okay. That was a six. Yes. All right. Um, let's talk about what you find as you just like die, do a deep dive into this thing. the the net the net gain is everyone who has ever looked at this thing has been wrong your people were wrong the superheroes who tracked this thing were wrong everyone has gotten it wrong with this thing and what you realize as you dig down deep this thing it's what inspired the legend of the elder gods. Oh. And and kind of the, the deepest level, when you really drill through into this thing, you realize that at some point it had been weaponized and it had been locked away and used as this big destructive weapon. Yeah, that's all true. Your people were right on that because that was all they knew. And they've seen these elder things. Oh. Off in other parts of the galaxy, they don't. They've never seen this. And the deeper you drill, what you realize is this thing survived the last universe. Like when when everything did a reverse Big Bang, heat death of that universe, and then all sucked back to one point, and then blew up to ours. This thing survived. It is. It's not intelligent in a way that. That would make it an elder thing. It's just like. Basic elemental impulses. And someone at some point. Decided to go in. And just slap some like control magic into it and some like technology into its brain to try to give it direction and make it into a weapon. And then Nightshade showed up 
and messed with it. And that's about all you get before something throws you out of its brain. Which was a lot. Admittedly, that was a lot. That was a lot. How do you relate yeah. that to us to where we can understand? That's the real real question. It's right. just a scream stretched out through time. So uh, basically this, this thing's a mold problem that outlived the last universe and uh, you know, had some plugins and some mods. And uh, honestly, I don't know a lot about modding and plugging in. Um, that's not my, my forte, so to speak, but uh, maybe it has too many uh, plugins running at once or not enough plugins running at once. Or maybe it's plugging into Nightshade. Anyway. Um, so if we can take it out and send it back somehow, then we can stop Nightshade from from uh, being possessed. Because, you know, when I encountered her, she countered her. There was something weird about her, something weird about her eyes. Like, I, I definitely think she's possessed by this thing. So, which, and I... And I thought back then she would be, but it makes even more sense now that you've said this. I don't know. Uh -huh. If there's too many plugins, can you, um, is there like a shop that you could take the tree to? Tree shop? I don't know. Like, shop shop. That's the only shop I want to Like, take. when my phone overloads, I take it to the store, they fix it, or I take it to a hacktivist and she can fix it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe we can find some, like, kick-ass druids that can, like... Oh, wait, it's not a real tree. It's a damn monster. Let's kick it. So, down. can we do that to the monster? Like, beat it up and it'll reset? What happened okay. to that black hole I was supposed to get? <laughs> oh, I'm keeping tabs on that. Okay. Um, I think a black hole need. would be really helpful. Yeah, I could kick its ass. I mean, it's pretty big, right? How how much bigger is it than Stone Strike? Orders of magnitude. All right, I could kick its ass. <laughs> I could probably like punch through it or something, get inside, rip its heart up or something. I don't know. I try to figure it out. I could bust through normal walls. They're made of wood. I know it's not a real tree. I don't know. I got nothing, man. I'm just a dude who plays bass. So the tree is now uh, melted down to the point that it is basically just this big half dome blob at the surface of the water. All of the branches have like melted down to the sides and just become more tentacles that are floating on the surface of the water. I have a question. Are any hooked into the ground like the the roots were back at the... Um... None that you can see on the surface. There might be stuff happening underwater. Can I try to... I don't know what I can see, but <laughs> can I try to? Yeah. Uh, you you want to stick your head in the water and see what's going on under there? Sure, I'll take a swim. All right. Um, let's roll me a uh, assess the situation. So that's going to be plus superior. I'm muted. I don't know where to start. Oh, hey, you hit. Woohoo! All right. Um, so, yeah, you hop in the water real fast, look around. There are a couple of bigger, thicker tentacles that are kind of da hanging down from it. Um, and 
they do seem to be kind of buried into the bottom of the of the bay. Okay. Um, does my chainsaw work underwater? Yeah, it's a dream chainsaw. <laughs> it works everywhere. Can I try to saw it? <laughs> All right. You want to swim out underneath this giant other thing? Sure. Why we not? Can, we can try that. <laughs> it's the last episode. Why not? Heck yeah. Okay. Um, I could go down there. Hey, did with you like tell your teammates you were doing this, or did you just dive <laughs> into the water? I just dove into the water. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Star's gone. Um, I'll give yeah. them a chance to react. Uh, I'm not a great swimmer, so maybe someone else could go after her and figure out what the hell she's doing. Hey, be Star. Running. <laughs> can I? Can I just read Star's mind to see if I can figure out what that? that thought is <laughs> um star would you would you be trying to keep idk out no okay uh yeah you can get a pretty clear idea just from familiarity yeah. it's like oh okay yeah. chainsaw okay. tree roots it's all there yeah chainsaw tree roots it's all there it's pretty obvious what star's up to uh start roll me a uh unleash your powers so that's gonna be plus freak Okay. Um, so one moment. Yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> Six. Okay. Um, so your chainsaw totally works and totally fires off other little chainsaws still. And you see them like hit the, the skin of this tree thing uh, and like chew up a little bit, but there's a lot of tree and there's not a lot of air. So that's why this one fails is because there's not a lot of air down here. As it turns out. What? No way. What about our, all of our fancy rebreathers that we have? Wink. Do y'all? We, we need a shipment of rebreather stat. <laughs> she just pulls out her from her tech pockets of her superhero. That suit. I buy. That I 100% buy. Like, yeah. And uh, throws together some some breathers, some oxygen extractors. Do I do I need a rebreather? <laughs> no, no, you don't. You don't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> you you don't. You might not even necessarily hit some of the requirements for being alive. So, no, oh, breathing's no. probably not really Can an I, issue. Uh, Definitely um, not. <laughs> While I'm waiting for the new rebreather or whatever, do the chainsaws, like when they shoot out chainsaws, can they be handed out to the team members? Um, hmm. I mean, we could take a roll and see if we can do that. Just so they can all have something to hack at the tree roots with. Um, okay. Roll me. What do I want you to do for this? Okay. Okay. I want you to roll plus freak for me. And this is a big important role. So if you want to use some of those team points y'all have available, this might be a good time to do that. Yeah, yeah. Use all the That's team it. points. Oh, okay. well, you got nine. So. I got nine. Okay. Um, if you like sit there with, uh, if you like sit there while, while hacktivist is making all of the rebreathers and you just really co focus and concentrate, you can make, more of these dream chainsaws for people. Oh, that's what I'm doing. I'm making dream chainsaws for the team. All right. For some amount of time, y'all each have a dream chainsaw. Okay, cool. I will uh, punch things with my stone arm. I, uh... Chainsaw things with my human arm. 
Uh, That's. <laughs> oh wait, I don't have a human arm anymore. It turned into a stone arm last session. I forgot. I'm all stone arms now. Yeah, your condition's accelerating. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ghost Wrath, can you hold a chainsaw? It's dream stuff. Of course he okay. can. Okay. <laughs> there no, there no <laughs> okay. Well. Well, I suppose I shall also join into this plan of chainsawing eldritch beings in half. Now all of our superpowers include chainsaws. I mean, it's a pretty strong superpower, really. <laughs> I mean, mine, mine always included that. <laughs> uh, can Hacktivist just have made the the breathers, or? Yeah, okay. it'll. Y'all, y'all are basically just like sitting here for a couple minutes, kind of taking stock of everything. IDK is getting back on their feet and floating again after that deep dive, uh, and after a few minutes where nothing really seems to be happening. Everything seems to just kind of be like calm before the storming. Uh, Y'all all have, everyone that needs it, has rebreathers, and everybody has dream chainsaws. Sweet. We're t so basically, we're just going to go like team of underwater lumberjacks on this thing and chop it up in little pieces, right? This doing? seems to be the plan y'all are going for, yeah. Does anybody have a better idea? <laughs> nope. And you look like a tree. Is gonna, I mean, is anyone to tree death stuff? Anyway, continue. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. I was uh, done rambling. I was. Uh, I was just going to ask if anyone's currently in the water. The stars on the shore, handing out a chainsaw. Right. I think um, IDK is floating directly above the water, trying to figure out how this chain thing works. So before. We attack with chainsaws. Hacktivist wants to try to electrify the entire bay. Okay. Uh, y yes. Um, let's do a thing for that. Um, so you're going to do wield your powers. Uh, so that's going to be a plus freak roll. And remember, finale, big moves. Maybe it's a team point or two or three or all of them. Who cares? Yeah, this is where all the dice betray me. So... Yeah, we have 17 points. <laughs> I think what we can use those. What do as a plus to your roll? I, I'm pretty sure, but you know. Yeah, I'll use one if everyone's cool with that. Heck yeah. I'm not, not cool with it. <laughs> I'm encouraging it. Okay, so do I add a bonus? Is that how I... Yeah, uh, how many are you going to use? You add that many pluses to it. Plus ones to it. Guys, how many do I want to use? I'll, I'll tell you, if work. you get results over 12, you're going to get a bigger result. Seven? Uh, right. Watch me roll a one. No, I'm just kidding. I can't. There's two die, right? <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> yeah. The, the lowest you can get is a two too. without negatives involved. So. I don't know, guys. I, I'll leave this up to you. I don't want to be selfish. I think you should do whatever you want to do if if you think it's a good idea because I trust you as a. What's your multiplier oh, for wow. for Party. zero these things? Zero, freak is zero for me. Freak. I'd use at least one. Yeah. If not two. Two. All right. <laughs> Wait. Whoop, I typed in three. <laughs> two. All right. Using two of those scene right. points. Sweet. Okay, uh, so that's a full hit. So the whole bay is going to be electrified. Um, some some fish pop up. Uh, the tentacles all kind of kind of flail out of the water a good bit. Like it's something happened for sure in a big and definitive way. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I just wrecked an ecosystem. Yeah, oh, look, you're that. a half villain, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, cool. Yeah, she just like sticks one hand in the water and just lets it rip. It's lightning arcing off like the the tentacles that were resting on top of the water just like flail up out of it. The whole kind of blob in the middle was like undulating and vibrating, trying to get as much of itself out of the water as possible. Fish are popping up all over the place. Uh, a couple more of those golem things like float up to the surface somehow in a couple places. But yeah, you uh you zapped you zapped an entire bay. Hey hacktivist? That was a lot. Just just keep in mind that was a lot. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> That you you may you might not want to do too many of those. So when you stand up to like dive into the water or whatever, you're kind of like, whoa. Oh yeah. Do about three more of those at least, though. Three. I'm just saying. Do, do all of them. Just all of them do all one. of them. It's the finale. If Hacktivist dies going out zapping the shit out of this tree. Wait a minute. Way that means go. no season two. <laughs> Let's not jump the gun. Nah. Hacktivist Junior can come along. <laughs> which would be her little sister, I imagine, who took the name Hacktivist <laughs> added Junior. At oh, yeah, it continue. just becomes a person. Or like, it just becomes a persona. Yes. <laughs> Always a Hacktivist. I like it. Every generation, a Hacktivist is born. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are y'all doing? Y'all got an electrified, eco-destroyed bay. You've got some rebreathers. You've got some chainsaws, dream chainsaws. <laughs> Can't get over that. Um, so I'm going to go in first because I'm the angriest and the toughest and the strongest. Um, so I'm going to put the rebreather on and then I'm going to go in swinging with an arm and a chainsaw. There's a uh, lot of splashing from the rest of y'all as, as he just like walks into the water just a lot of splashing <laughs> so it's just stay away from me because I'm going to be flailing around smashing things and good thing is I just sink to the bottom so I just walk down kind of like Link with his uh, you know, metal boots on you know, just... alright anybody else getting in the water Starwell all right. Or chainsaw. Uh, Heck yeah. Uh, you know, thinking about it, I'm not feeling that confident about actually getting in the water in this form. <laughs> As <That> I am <laughs> kind of intangible right now. Historically, fire and water don't do great together. <laughs> yeah. Maybe is the the trees melted by this point? It's just kind of it is back to its kind of elder thing shaped blob with tentacles now. Is there a way I can get inside this blob? There's still that bridge out to it that y'all were on earlier. I'm going to start heading for that. I have a plan. And the it, fiery shadow silhouette thing holding a dream chainsaw wanders off onto the bridge. It's called indigestion. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> and I chainsaw? <laughs> I start walking. You named the chainsaw? <laughs> Did I name the chainsaw? Yes, that could also be the, the chainsaw's name. <laughs> indigestion. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and just, who who else has got a plan? I think I want to be because I'm I can fly. I think I'm gonna try and go to the other side. I'm assuming there's a bunch of like tentacle roots, and it, they all kind of spread out. And I want to be on the other side of it. Okay. Um. To kind of like. You want to get all the way around it, I'm assuming. 
it probably would help to have people working on both sides. Yeah. So that's that's where I'm at. And that's I'm just gonna go zoop and like just plop, like kind of like okay, you know, without a lot of fanfare, just just doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so you're at the bottom of the lake now. Great, or bay, bay. Uh, hacktivist, did you actually go and take a swim, or are you just hanging out? All right. <laughs> So, everybody except uh, Raph is in the water. Uh, so, with the exception of of IDK, who basically just like dropped down real close to this thing, um, it's going to take everybody else a minute to swim out. Let's go and see what Raph is doing on his solo walk across the bridge. I'm going right for Eldritch Being territory, so I can yeah. get inside it, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, it it takes you much, it's much quicker for you to walk across this uh, this bridge than it is for them to swim. So yeah, you're able to get right up on it pretty quick. Up on it? Well, like it's right in front of you. Okay. We got a mouth. Not that you can see. It's just kind of a blob. All right. I'm trying to cut inside it. Cool. Uh, roll something. Um, <laughs> boy, I I guess just roll plus danger. Sh sh yeah. Sh sh is there equivalent to luck in this game, by the way? I don't think I ever was. No, I really. Hey, you got it, though. Um, what up, danger? Uh, yeah, it's um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, it's gross, but the chainsaw just like starts chipping through it pretty good. It's thick and rubbery and gross, and it um, doesn't seem to like it. I'm just slowly cutting away. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, it doesn't take long before you kind of like breach the surface like get through the outer layer and it looks like you could probably get inside of it there looks like there's a void in there that's fine <laughs> go right in cool we'll get back to that totally fine thing here soon i'm sure um <laughs> everybody else y'all are y'all are approaching these two bigger tentacles that are acting like roots uh, that are kind of burrowed into the ground. Are y'all just going to lay in with y'all's chainsaws? Uh, and or fists? It. Yeah, and I'm going to try and um, mix it with my um, unstoppable ability to smash my way into in its insides as well. I, I, okay. I, I wanted to get inside of it also, but just a more destructive method. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. So everybody not stone strike, just roll me a plus danger. Let's see what y'all do first. Uh, based on what I, I learned, do I know if that's a good idea or not? Or is that? Um, I mean. We'll find out. Hey. It's more. It's probably more accurate to say that just based on what this thing looks like, that this is probably not the best point of injury. But you can sure try. Um, okay, so y'all hit. Y'all are doing some good damage to it. Uh, let's say that you three, uh, Hacktivist, IDK, and Star, are focused on one tentacle, and Stone Strike is dealing with his own. So um, talk to me about this uh, unstoppable one more time what can what's what's that all about soundtrack sorry i was reading something and didn't realize you were talking to me yes unstoppable so it lets me bust my way through scenery quote unquote or get away from something a roll plus danger uh and on a seven and a nine i choose one market condition 
leave something behind or take something from you on a miss i smash through but leave devast i just want to kind of smash into it i don't know i i guess i could just attack it with like just do a regular attack like everyone else yeah yeah just roll danger for me and let's see what happens I don't. I don't know that unstoppable is is net maybe what. Okay, so that's a, a lot. Kapow. That's <laughs> a lot of a lot of things you rolled there. Um. So you you can just chop through yours too, basically, or at least chop a good way into it. Um. This is a root like tentacle, so you know it seems like where the other three are working on their tentacle, like they're maybe like a little deeper and they're like chopping through and it's kind of just solid. Yours has a little bit of an open space in there. <laughs> if you really want to try to get in, you can try. Yeah. I mean, I just figured ripping it up from the inside out would be the best way to kill something that big. I mean, it's it's certainly a thing we can roll dice and see what happens for. <laughs> yeah, my character's really tough, so, you know, that's always good. Uh-huh. So I'll just maybe hopefully be real tough. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, let's... Um, I didn't say it was a great plan. I just said it was a plan. It's the finale. I, uh, roll me another plus danger. Let's see. Let's see what, what it's like when you actually try to get up inside of this thing. Right. Okay. okay. Um, it takes a little bit of doing. It's really gross, but you are inside of this tentacle thing, uh, which you know may or may not be a great place that you always want it to be. Um, because, you know, like you got through your tentacle real quick, like just basically like one slash and it was through, and then you decided to get inside of it. Uh, mm -hmm. the other three took a minute to chop through their tentacle. Um, as soon as their tentacle separated, this thing took notice and every tentacle it has starts flailing around and the last that activist star and idk see of of stone strike is his legs sticking out of the bottom of this tentacle as he's trying to crawl inside of it and just being whipped around the bottom of this bay um <laughs> we're gonna get back to this disaster here in a moment uh let's go back up to wrath so you're inside of it. It's kind of a big, nasty, slimy void. Um, you can kind of see what 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 would have been the shapes that it was using to convince people that it was just a tree. Like it looks like there's some bark patterns on some of the walls still. You can see like mm. little bits of things that look like wood kind of scattered around, but they're all kind of melting back into just blobness in the very middle of this giant expansive space. There are a couple of really weird things. The first is as you, as you kind of like get in closer, it looks like there's stones bolted into this thing's flesh that have runes carved on them. And also in some other places, what look almost like bits of tech bolted on it as well. And this, this kind of jives with what IDK tried to communicate to y'all that someone messed with this, this thing, but in the very center of this space, Attached to a couple of like almost like flagella and basically like suspended in the center of this space is a um, human woman. I don't know that you have you ever met Nightshade? Did you ever meet Nightshade? I think it was just Stone Strike, but from what he had told y'all, 
This is probably Nightshade. And this seems weird. Hmm. Well, it's time to move on to phase two. Which is Oh to... no, your plan has phases. Yes. Phase one was get inside. Phase two is charge up my powers. Okay. So I'm going to charge up my burn. Uh, oof. Okay. What's a... Uh, I need these points here. What's the T point? Uh, it'll add a plus one. Plus so that'll one take it from... Uh, that'll take it from a miss to a partial success. Cool. Uh, when you charge your PRs on a hit, hold three burn on a seven to nine marker condition. On a yeah. miss, hold two and mark three conditions. Okay, so uh, marker condition, uh, sure, and you get to hold three because it's still a it's still a hit. Okay, I'm gonna mark. Uh, wait. <laughs> I'm going to mark hopeless. Love it. Okay. Rolling freak instead of danger. Is my freak going to get? Yes, it is. Okay. So we've reached phase two of the plan. I'm inside. Uh, I'll, I'll sweat. Walk up to Nightshade. What's going on with her? Uh, she is kind of just unresponsive. It's kind of like one of those like tentacly flagella things is attached to her head and like holding her upright and two more are just kind of like ink wrapped around her legs. So she's just kind of like hanging there. I see. I see. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to think about it. Should I worry about collateral damage? Mm, nah, I'm not really worried about it. And I'll I'll use Reality Storm <laughs> to uh, unleash a destructive burst of power. Okay. Uh, Tell so me what this does. <laughs> I can spend one burn to directly engage a threat using, using my power of rolling plus freak instead of plus danger. Uh, if I do, I'll cause unwanted, unwanted collateral damage unless I spend another burn. But uh, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, roll that beautiful bean footage. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. What's happening? Uh, hey, I think you'll still have a couple points if you want to use some more points. You should use some more I'm points. I'm, I'm wondering, do I have the right? Oh, you, <laughs> you need at least one. You need at least one. No, if least... not, seven. Oh, we don't have seven. No, 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 no. You should use some points for sure. Let, let, let me Why? tell you real fast. In If we were sitting at a table together playing this, and you had rolled that five without any team points, I would be on the floor cackling with what I was about to do to y'all. Uh, you can still be on the floor cackling. I mean... Oh, yeah. This is not as professional for a stream game. I free. say sitting free. in the kitchen. How many points do we have left? Six? Six. Some amount. I'd have to use two. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think y'all are actually... Y'all should actually be at five, but yes, go ahead and use two. All right, five. Use two? It, it is enough that you can use two, yes. So you can take that to a seven. If I use these team points, I won't be using any team points for the rest of time. Hey, if you use these team points, you don't end the world. All right, sure. I'll use two team points. Make it a seven. What? Oh, they're good. I almost destroyed the world. All right, so uh, we've got we've got you a, a seven then, so it's a hit. Um, all right, I want you to describe uh, some stuff is still going to happen, but that's not because of your role. That's because of your choice. Um, I want you to describe the inside as Raph 
basically goes nuclear in here. What's what's going on? Um, I think I start ver. I see. I think I start burning very bright instead of looking like maybe like a shadow-esque version of himself and silhouetted it it just turns into full like uh human torch vibes as uh it all concentrates and builds up and builds up and you know fire starts to swirl around him and just comes all into the center and then bursts out okay uh i'm going to give you i'm gonna let me let me ask you let me ask you here now you had already talked about you didn't want there you didn't care if there was collateral damage. Does do you count as collateral damage? Do I count as collat I mean yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean- All right. Um I want you to roll a d6 for me. Just up and down, roll me a d6. Sure. Okay. Good to know. Um, so when the camera pulls back a good ways, what they see is like all of a sudden all the tentacles start to flail from being chopped on the bottom and being disconnected from the root system. Uh, but then they see the camera sees this big, like the central mass of this thing, just like start expanding and expanding and expanding and it's glowing. And since like tears happen and energy just starts like blasting out of it. And underwater, uh, stone strike is basically shot out of, his tentacle like a bullet from a gun from the force of this explosion coming down through it. And the whole thing is just kind of like deflated. And we're going to come back and find out what happened to Raph after our break. So we're going to take a real quick break here. uh, And then we will come back and find out what's going to happen with these teens.
welcome back. We are going to, uh, by hook or by crook, we are going to find out what happens to these super teens tonight. Um, the camera pans over Harper Bay in Eon City, and there's just this this weird kind of collapsed blobby thing that's smoking and the tentacles are just kind of laying limp on the surface of the of the water and we're going to zoom down under the water down to idk hacktivist star and i guess stone strike i don't know where he landed it when he got um fired out of a tentacle like a bullet um <laughs> due to the force of Raph's explosion. Uh, the other three of y'all are fine. You'll have been able to avoid thrashing tentacles and everything. And there was like a big blast that happened, but the force of it went largely up, thank you, thankfully. And now the tentacles are just kind of lying limp down here. I imagine I'm in like it's like one of those scenes in Dragon Ball Z where like one where they get knocked back into like a, a rock and it forms a crater behind them. It's just sort of smoking there. <laughs> yeah. I was picturing something like that or uh, like a a Looney Tune scene where you're like buried to the waist in mud. That works too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. I'm gonna make. I'm just gonna be struggling to climb out for a minute. I imagine. Fair enough. What are the other three doing? Uh, I think I'm going to resurface and uh, try and like survey the scene and kind of get a like try to um, figure out what just happened and where we're at right now. Okay. Um, Roll me and assess the situation. Uh, oh, I'm really good at that. Hooray. I'm really, really good at that. Yeah, you are. Um, so it looks like something blew up inside of this, of this thing. But something weird's happening. I know I say that a lot. This one's especially weird. Because uh, now, things are starting to happen on the surface of this uh, deflated flesh bubble thing. Uh, there's like arcs of red lightning that are starting to like dance around on the top of its skin. Um, and unrelated to that, you feel something in the back of your head that you haven't felt in a long, long time. Still real faint, still real far off. Is that my family? Someone like you is on their way. Oh, someone like me. Oh, how far away are they? They're still a good bit away. I have been doing a countdown thing on my phone this entire time to figure out when they were going to show up narratively. Uh, and they're still a couple clicks away. So I'm thinking we need to contain this thing. And, and get it into a, a small enough area so that we can... Uh, we don't have to make the biggest black hole ever. And I'm right. going to convey that to my teammates. All right, star hacktivist, what are you, what are you all up to? A hacktivist is just kicking her weak little legs trying to get up to the surface. Um, Star's probably going to help her get to the surface. Cool. Oh. 
<laughs> FFs. They, they, the team has all been through some stuff together. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So everybody eventually, even Stone Strike, manages to get out of the water uh, one That's way or another. To be. Well, you were like buried up into your waist into some sort of rubble. Um, <laughs> I am the rubble. <laughs> kind of. Uh, you all realize pretty quickly, though, that Wrath is not around. Do we know that Wrath is the one that blew it the hell and back? Or? Um, kind of. <laughs> I. I I feel like y'all can probably make that assumption, especially since there's still like raft colored energy kind of arcing around the body. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, um, should we look for our friend? Because hopefully he didn't just like off himself to kill this thing. Yeah. That would be most unfortunate. Yeah. Can we, um, is there a way to stop him from like, going away that's an interesting question um so y'all are gonna go try to find him i think my character would want to okay. yeah activist is like <laughs> i think i think idk would um i think that's a good idea but if there's enough people on that task they might not they might focus on trying to um contain the beast okay uh then it sounds like, like what we're gonna have is we'll have hacktivist and idk staying back uh hacktivist catching her breath and idk thinking strategically uh and stone strike and star heading into the to the beast? Does that sound right? All right. Uh, let's let's actually follow Stone Strike and Star first. Um, so the thing is kind of like deflated a bit, but y'all can still pretty easily find where Raph chainsawed his way in. And y'all can still get inside of there if you want to. So we can see like the energy. Oh, he used his chainsaw to cut through. Okay. And y'all can y'all can get in that way if y'all want to. In but is there any, like, any sign of him? Uh, you'd have to get inside to look around. Okay. Stars going in. All right. Uh, okay. Strike. Yeah. Uh, let me go in first, maybe. Back up, star. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm gonna look at you like you're crazy, but then I'll let you go in first. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. So inside, it is burned out. Like everything is blackened and scorched. Um, the the ground, like it is all just a clear, especially down towards the center. It's just a clear, glassy surface. There is what looks kind of like a body in the middle. Um, and I'm not going to go into any detail on that because that can be gross. Um, there looks to be a body in the middle. Um, and no clear sign of Raph, but there is a lot of... Y'all have seen him go like super burny energy like once or twice. Like he's shown off kind of that that burn energy of his before. Um, but y'all had never really seen it deployed this big. But you can still see like arcs of it are moving around the ceiling like through these tears in the thing's skin above y'all. Uh, but Raph himself you don't really see anywhere. Can I call out the he's hiding somewhere? Yeah. Uh, and I think with that note is a good time to actually flip over to Raph. 
um, with with Star's voice kind of echoing in the room and echoing over, we see Raph kind of in a different place. Like a different plane almost. Um, no, actually, I'm going to rewind that. I'm going to do that differently. I'm going to do that better. So Star calls out Raph's name. And we're as that like that her yell echoes, we see like kind of the color shifts in the camera lens and floating just over Stone Strike's shoulder, we see this this none of y'all see this. This is all happening in some other plane of his existence. Uh, we see this bulb that's got runes carved in it. That anyone who had been around at the beginning of the season would recognize as the bulb that Nightshade gave Stone Strike to be able to disguise his shape. The one that he thought he crushed, and the one that IDK knew had just kind of split itself away from the physical world off to just kind of a uh, magic realm. And now that bulb has developed some roots and a shoot is coming out of it with a small little purple and black orchid flower is starting to bloom. <clears throat> and two people are looking at that. One of them is just a, a wretched looking person, old, haggard, you know, bent over like like the the crone from that meme of the old lady going down the trap door from I think Snow White um, like that kind of person um, and the other one is Raph human body Raph like got his camera in his hand the, the good fun Raph that everyone remembers who was just all about his followers and wanting to make the biggest name for himself mm -hmm. And they're both looking at this flower. That's where you find yourself after kind of the glow faded from your eyes, Raph, is you can kind of see your friends vaguely exploring this burned out space. And there's this old crone looking at this weird floating orchid bulb. Who the hell are you supposed to be? Ah, I'm someone with plans. I used to have plans a long time ago. Right, was, uh, was this your plan? She she reaches out and just like runs a finger down the stem of the flower. It's like this was a plan. <sighs> I don't think it was mine though. My magic, but something else powered it. They mm. called me Nightshade once. I was a bit of a trickster. She looks around, looks back at you, and just says, I think I tried to punch above my weight class with this one. And then coughs a couple times. Yeah. Right. Bro. Sorry, what'd you say? I interrupted you. Oh, yeah, me? One more time, Raph? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. It cut out also. Yeah. Yeah, you might have just, uh, just a little bit, bro. <laughs> Everyone got it wrong with this thing. I thought it was just a mindless living weapon, but seems like it was more than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Sorry, repeat that. <laughs> I thought this thing was just a mindless weapon. But I guess it was more than that. Yeah, well. Everybody had made a pretty good uh pretty good job of underestimating me and my friends and uh you know, they thought we were just kids. I certainly underestimated your friend Philip. And she looks down at his form kind of below y'all walking around. That's me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm In the real it. world, Stone Strike just looks around like, who said my name? What? What? <laughs> Do you hear that? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> yeah. Stone Strike's uh, one hell of a guy. <sighs> she she points at the orchid and says, Would you like to learn a little magic, young man? A little magic? Say no. I don't really think it's going to help me much. While I look like myself, I think we both realize this isn't really who I am anymore. She she lets out like a coughing, cackly laugh and just goes, no, no, no. See, this pretty little flower right here, let's call this my plan B that someone else supercharged. I thought I could make a very good puppet out of your friend at one time. And, well, I was being made a puppet myself. But this, and she, like, kind of lifts the orchid up a little bit and moves it right directly between you two. This is a special flower. It doesn't exist in any one place. It exists in every place. And if you wish hard enough, you can store yourself away. Put a copy of yourself for a rainy day in there. What do the computer people say? A backup? And she taps a couple runes and you see this like almost like shadowy ghost image of the woman that you had seen hanging up by the in the middle of the of the other thing before you went nuclear. The same woman that Stone Strike described as Nightshade. And seeing the two of them there at the same time, you kind of go like, oh yeah, yeah. This is what she would look like, the old woman that you're seeing now is what she would look like if she had aged normally since the 40s. Mm. Mm. And uh, she just okay. waves her hand through that ghost and just says, I'm tired, young man. If you want a second shot, she makes three runes show up on the orchid. If you want a second shot, tap those three runes, and whatever's left of you, your spirit, your soul, your conscience, will go into the bulb. But me, I'm done. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if Raph really believes her. <laughs> then why don't we switch over real fast and let you think on that? Um, and in fact, if you want to just shoot me what you decide, we can narrate that when we get to epilogues. Okay. Uh, so we're going to go back to the, the shoreline, uh, where hacktivist and IDK are working. 
Uh, Hacktivist, how, how you doing? You got your breath back a little bit? Uh, Hacktivist is doing like a stray Little Mermaid prince. I forget his name, but you know, crawling over <laughs> the sea. She's just like laying down, being very dramatic about the whole thing. Checking all of her electronics <laughs> to see if the waterproofing of her suit helps. <laughs> Not my cell phone. Good. Not my cell phone. Uh, IDK, uh, what are you? What are you doing? I know. I know you're you're trying to work on a containment plan here. What, what's going on? Well, it's it's occurred to me that there's not everybody is accounted for, and hmm. a couple of our group just went back into the the thing. So now I need to figure out. How do we contain the thing without containing my friends and throwing them into the black hole as well? Because that would be a no-no. Uh, um, I'm kind of just baffled. Like uh, this is this is a lot. And uh, is there any way I can? I guess my thought is: is there any way I can kind of like jolt it? So it kind of like almost maybe I need a combo move with Hacktivist to try and give it some mental electricity or electrokinesis. Okay. So it kinda like stuns it and it kind of like starts like um, curling up like a spider. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Yes. I love this. Um so, hacktivist, if you're on board and feeling up to it, like bioelectrokinesis, yeah, all right. Both of y'all roll to unleash your powers. Do we want to spend any team points? Yeah, uh, we did get another one. I saw we hit five retweets and got another team point. So now's the time. I feel like it's probably uh, more for important, Cat, for you to spend it on your role. Yeah, I'll use a team point. Because what what's the worst that could happen, right? <laughs> well, the worst thing that could happen is that Hacktivist accidentally shuts your brain down. Oh. Well, oh, so about that. Oh. <laughs> that team point put me over into hit mode, uh, hit territory. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun. Um, okay, let's go ahead and just say this because it is finale time. This is gonna work. Hacktivist is unconscious. Um, oh, it's been a long day for Hacktivist, and that was a lot of energy again. And Hacktivist is taking a nap. <laughs> uh, for a, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Um. So, IDK, you're like working with this electricity that you got, and you you found that there's plenty of energy still running through that thing, um, and you are making it like start to curl in on itself and just kind of squeeze down a little bit. Is that kind of the idea? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, would you like to reach out and warn your two friends that are inside? Yes. Yes, I would. Cool, cool. Uh, so this thing is going to start like curling up like a spider uh, here in a second. We're going to cut back inside to Star and Stone Strike. Um, just before everything started to go weird inside here, uh, y'all both get a message from IDK. What did you what did you tell them, IDK? Um well, I guess I would probably convey I it's safe to assume I can tell how far away my my folks are. Um and I'm basically telling them that I'm I'm trying to uh contain this beast. Um and that whatever you're doing, make it quick. Uh, oh. what, what do you mean contain the beast? Like in a net or something? Uh, like a, 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 a have, 
have we not been on the same team for a, a bit? It, it's a psychogenic net. It's like a bio. It's like uh, a okay. Faraday cage would have been great. Um. All right. So, yeah, Star. Let's get the hell out of here. I don't. I don't want to get caught in a net with this thing. It's it, well. It's not a net. It's it 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 itself will be a net for you. What? That doesn't make any sense. All right. But what I, about I, what we came in here for? I don't, okay, yeah. I just don't want to die. Well, I don't either, a, but... All right. Well. Uh, Raph. There is, there is no sign of Raph. Raph, bud. Maybe we leave him a note or something. What if... Okay, but if he dies, I'll be really upset. Yeah, obviously I will be too. Uh, watch his Twitch channel quite a bit. <laughs> uh, all right, so y'all are gonna head on out. Yeah. So y'all y'all get back out and y'all are running back across the bridge, and behind y'all, like all the tentacles, kind of <laughs> reach out of the water and curl around, and this thing is kind of in a tight compact ball and the light show starts this red energy starts to arc between these tentacles around it and the whole thing starts to lift out of the water idk you're still working on like containing this and you definitely didn't tell it to float um and all of a sudden you realize that some part of it is waking back up from whatever shock it took. Oh, I'm going to start singing a lullaby. Okay. Since there's a light show, I'm probably going to like take a, either a David Bowie or a Pink Floyd song and turn it into lullabyify it. Love it. Like Starman, the tune of Rockabye Baby or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I dig that. Um, it's kind of working. Um, it is stalling this thing from waking up fully. You, you realize since you're in its brain, like in its mind, that whatever blast went off did two things. First, it got rid of all of the things that other people had done to this thing. Like all of those plugins people had put on it, blasted free. And the second thing it did, I think, was it. It basically, good, it basically right? gave this monster a super powered nuclear battery. <sighs> that that's not the good part. That's the non good part. So your your lullaby is slowing it down, which is a really good thing because right now what you feel like it wants to do more than anything, it's always really light stars. It wants to turn in and it wants star. a supernova. It's got all of this power now. It can do and be whatever it wants. Well, there's a Starman, he'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'll blow our minds. See, he's not going to come down, and he's not going to blow up. <laughs> You're fired. I'm using David Bowie as a superpower. It's great. Uh, you, you, you suddenly hear. Um, which of your, which of your parents did you have the best relationship with idk i'm gonna go with elders and um i'd say like a grandparent cool cool uh so you're the the mental voice of your grandfather just kind of like rings into your head and just goes oh so we shouldn't land uh, 
I, I, I'm kind of relaying the, the idea and I'm, I'm not sure if landing is the best idea, but. Because uh, you said Starman not help. come down. Oh, no, 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 no. I was talking, I, I was talking about this thing and I, I like, you know, mentally gesturing towards the, uh, the monster I'm trying to contain. All right. Well, oh, 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 okay, 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 cool. You've got it. Nice. Didn't think you could pull that off. Um, oh, he's probably like, oh, put that down. It's too heavy for you. Yeah. I didn't. How's it hovering? You're not. How do you do that? I, I, I don't know. I've, I'm probably like a good foot and a half taller than this this parent grandparent grandfather and uh you know i i height leverage youth oh you don't know got it right okay uh so we have this thing that makes a black hole that's good great can uh you show me how to use it yeah um probably yeah here you go and he he and the rest of your family uh, descend. Do you want to describe what it looks like when however many members of your family land around you and your friends? Uh, Do they have a ship? Yeah, I would say most of them probably stay back in the ship. And I guess the way I'm envisioning this is it's just my, like my grandfather and he's, he's kind of like hobbling in a weird way because he's floating down like from the ship and he's carrying this like huge, like it looks like a sawzall. And uh, you know, he kind of comes down and he he's, kneels down and he's uh, lab laboredly breathing, like trying to take it apart. And he starts messing with like, he opens up the box that it's in. It's like in a toolbox. And he pulls out the tool that kind of and he fiddles with it and is like, oh, no, 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 not that one. Um, and he pulls out, like, he, he's fiddling with it. And it's it's almost like he's being less helpful than if I had just tried to figure it out myself. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I'm, I'm really just enjoying the fact that he's taking the time to, to sit down and, and talk to me about this. And he's like, you know, I've, I've, had, I've seen a lot of people, like, you know, lose fingers with this thing. So like, don't, you know, metal jumps and, uh, you know, be careful. Don't keep your, keep your fingers away from the blade, like, or the, you know, and it's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I like my fingers and I'm not going to like put them in the way of this thing. So you're, you're going to want to, you're cutting through reality here and reality is going to want to buck. So yeah, uh, yeah. you, you got to keep tight grip on it. And really make sure you're aiming right. Yep. All right. You have a black hole gun that you kind of know how to use now. All right. Um, so I think I'm going to try and uh, talk to my group here and be like, uh, is everybody a safe enough distance away from this thing? Um, yeah, like. I actually have no idea what a safe distance from this thing is. So I don't think I can give you a definitive answer on that. Uh, IDK's grandpa just kind of shrugs and just goes, eh, just try not to get sucked in. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, um, I, behind it, I guess, is a good, yeah. Um, All right, so out of character my plan is to basically go and build like an underground bunker real quick by just smashing a hole into the ground and then sort of burying me and my friends for safety <laughs> cool there's enough rubble around here you can build a pretty good bunker activist all right is yeah melting, just, so. yeah activist is still unconscious <laughs> well cool so i uh pick activist up delicately and put her over my shoulder and um like carry her down into the bunker once I have it dug out and everyone else is kind of settled in. Uh, everyone else being just star, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so star's just settled in, probably snacking on a granola bar or something, like play, kicking a rock. <laughs> and I'm just going, 
sit sit my pal Hacktivist down and uh and then once and once I get the go ahead from uh, IDK or sorry once I get the go ahead from WTF which is what my character calls them <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, basically just smash that smash close whatever hole I ha we made our way through initially. All right. So, IDK, your friends are safe. Perfect. Um, now, is there any differentiation in, like, so I imagine, like, a lot of the light show or some of the light show is probably Wrath in there somewhere. It's his energy is probably the best way to describe it. Um, you can't really feel Wrath anymore. Okay. Like there's there's some weird echoes happening somewhere, but it's not here. And certainly not inside that thing. All right. So I think I'm gonna just try to carefully, but also this sawzall that's older than I am is <laughs> you know gonna do what it's gonna do, and I'm just gonna go along for the ride and hope that I can contain it <laughs> and uh, just kind of start cutting around the the um, elder thing. All right. Uh, get me, pick me your best stat and roll that. Um, that would be the superior. Should I use a, a team point for this? Hey, uh, this is probably going to be the last roll, so may as well. How many team points do we have left? It says four on the overlay, and I'm going to trust that. Should I just go for all of them? Yes. Why okay. not? Sure. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> that was the difference between an eight and a... And a 12. Yeah, so I'd say uh, I would 100% say that that means that this thing is going to be uh, safely disposed of and it's not going to eat parts of the city. Perfect. So good job. Uh, so there's the, the black hole kind of rips open around it and it's kind of just like parts of reality fold in on itself. And as it's getting sucked into this pocket dimension, wherever a black hole goes to, uh, as it's like falling down, which is not, this is not how physics works, but I don't care. It's comic books. Uh, as it's falling, you can see it just like ignite as it goes. And then the black hole like shloops back in on itself and it closes up. So somewhere it's off being a beautiful star. Yep. Your Not grandpa. Here, and that's what's important. Yep. And your grandpa comes over and just like shoves your your shoulder and just goes, "Boy, I didn't even know if that would work. Good job." <laughs> Whoa, yeah, grandpa. Uh, it worked. Thanks for that. That, uh, uh, it really helped. Yeah, you did good. You uh, you ready to come home then? I don't know. Well, I feel like I should at least like help pick up from this mess All a little right. bit, and I'm kind of looking around the city like it's probably not all. It's not magically all put back together, right? No, not yet. Uh, in fact, that's going to be a great place for us to transition out uh, into our epilogue time. The camera's going to pull back uh, from this beach, and the green mist that's covered everything is fading away, and people are starting to wake up. There's shots of a bunch of different heroes and people waking up off the street. Um Stone Strike undoes his bunker and he and Star bring Hacktivist out and the camera pans up and away 
and it's going to go the epilogue is going to fade out to a black space where Raph the one and the true form of Nightshade are still standing with the orchid between them. And mm-hmm. Nightshade is just mm-hmm. waiting for an answer. All you gotta do is just hit those rooms. And you'll be preserved in some form. I I'd I'd like for that I'd like for that to be true. But I just cannot trust you. She kind of hangs her head. I understand. Well, there's probably enough super people in the world anyways. But I still think you should use it. She just laughs at you. Young man, do you know the harm I've caused to this to the people in your city? Why would you why would you say that to me? Because it's never too late to turn it all around. To work your way back. I think you could. She just looks at you long and hard as the lights go down on this shot. So we're going to start our epilogue then with Raph. What happens to Raph in this moment? Well, I think Raph has a very hard road for Raph. As far as things go, just losing, losing his body, losing his mind, really, for weeks on end, months on end, perhaps even years. I think it's, he's got a bit of peace now. The world is saved. His friends are safe. And he's now free to let go. And just go to whatever happens to me next. So Raph fades away, huh? Yes, I think he does. All right. The next thing we see is the words six months later on the screen. And who knows what their character is going to do where their character is going to be, who their character is going to be six months from today. I have an idea. All right. But if anyone else wants to, has, has an idea, they can go first. All right. Um, I was thinking uh, about a month later uh, from the, from the point that we left off that um, my character during a um, just like kind of a standard superhero mission and at witnessing a friend get killed and uh, went into another one of those rages that he went into and ended up uh, finishing his transformation off um, uh, turning him into full uh, earth elemental, um, but it ends. But it the chaotic nature of of the rage and the effect it has on his mind doesn't seem to subside, and he uh, retreats to a mountainous, a nearby mountainous area of wilderness near uh, or yeah I said nearby already uh, and, and into like a, a system of caves uh, and just sort of like lives in a cavern and if the 
and if you know if he's ever called upon to help again something he he might be have he he very well could have a grip on his rage enough by then to assist but maybe not so we'll have to see and he still listens to metal even though he's in the cave it actually has got really good acoustics so nice that nothing changed in that regard Nice. Who else? Who's next? Yeah, I'll go. So six months into the future, um, hacktivist uh, has finished out the school year and uh, is just generally doing some very selfish things to take care of herself because she is disillusioned with both sides now um, after a, that type of, of mission. Um, and so she's, you know, siphoning money here and setting herself up there. And, uh, you know, every so often if she sees an injustice, especially if it's uh, workers being exploited or or something like that she'll pitch in and it's a very starts to become very chaotic trending toward good but not not really and uh so one day you see her you know walking out of class on her senior uh year of high school and the uh, very nice car pulls up and the chauffeur gets out and opens the door and she gets in and it takes her to her mom's office building and she walks in up to a little office next to her mom's and she sets down her bag and she logs into her computer. Cool. All right. IDK. Um, so I would say that my, you know, like traveling intergalactically is a haul. So my folks are kind of sticking around and uh, doing some intergalactic diplomacy. And, you know, um, for the most part, I've kind of moved back into the, the spaceship and I just beam down for classes. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, like eating with my family every night and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of, planning on finishing out the school year um, and then going home. And then, you know, like one night I'm going to my grandfather's quarters and to, to bring him for, to go get him and tell him dinner's ready. And um, he's kind of faded away into the ether. And, uh, you know, it's, it's weird and it's, it kind of puts me in a, a just like it's like a, a snap like I, I'm in a, like a whole other world and suddenly I'm not quite so sure if leaving earth is really what I need to do right now like you know life feels a lot shorter than it was and you know maybe I need to to take more time to explore before I, I really like go home and settle down and become a responsible adult. Um, and so I, I guess I'm kind of sitting there on that, that fence um, and sitting down and, hey, maybe I'll go, like, I guess you don't go out for drinks when you're a teenager. Maybe, you, what, do you, what do you do? Do you go out for like ice cream? <laughs> I'm going out for ice cream with, uh, you know, my team and, and kind of bouncing that idea off of them and like, you know, maybe should I stay or, or should I, what? And I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in there or, or not, but, or we can just leave it at that. I'm um, a forest target. If a star would show up for that, but I would have to do my epilogue do that we can we can circle back around then and okay. get back to that question here in a second so star 
um, after the mission was over, she was kind of quiet and she went to her dorm and she took one of the motorcycles and one small bag and left. She just drove off and left. And um, she drove across country and figured out how to use her powers. And um, nobody will say they saw her because she's so good at blending in, like really good at blending in. But when she gets the call for um, ice cream or whatever, she shows back up. And when she shows back up, she's got a different costume, a better motorcycle, and she just, um, a tattoo, yeah. <laughs> She's been gone for however long that was. And yeah. just looks mysterious. Like, What's what was she doing? Do I, I need to know. Um, it's a... What is the chaos symbol? <laughs> oh, it's it's like thirteen arrows pointing out from one center. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Oh, very good. So, uh, let's wrap it up this ice cream social. Um, Stone Strike, did you come down from the mountains for this? Uh, let's just say I'm creeping in the bushes, <laughs> wishing I could be friends but i've got like a squirrel living in, in my <laughs> hair and a we can we can sit outside a... on a patio <laughs> can idk <laughs> does idk know that stone strike is there yeah i'm sure idk probably would catch <laughs> yeah like, like moping like in the bushes <laughs> it has to be a very big bush too because i'm so huge so it's like a tree really is. <laughs> or he's like thinking he's hiding and he's not. Yeah, that could also be it. <laughs> I, because I'm part of the earth, you know, I blend in, but really it's just like this rock creature. Standing but we know it's you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I feel like I'd move the, the group over to the uh, to a table next to a bush on the outdoor patio. And I would just kind of like, oh, oh, yeah. Hey, hey, everybody. I, I was in the neighborhood. Uh, don't mind that squirrel. She, ju she just had babies. She's very protective. That's fine. I think I'm going to give a walnut to the squirrel. All right. She uh, takes it, uh, but then also <laughs> sort of uh, like bites at you a bit before running off and then hiding back into what, uh, hiding back into the small, like, tree that's like growing out of my spine this is fine <laughs> i've got sunglasses so i'm gonna put them on and just look really unimpressed with everything ah <laughs> uh, yes showing off your tattoo probably like yes probably like oh it's on my arm so i have to take my jacket off and just kind of oh yeah <laughs> really unimpressed <laughs> hacktivist rolls up like 20 minutes late in her special car, she gets out. She's wearing like super preppy clothes, not slovenly like you remember. She's got AirPods in. She just, <laughs> yeah. The new AirPods, right? Uh, and as soon as she uh, walks up, though, she just like collapses back in her old slouch uh, at the table and is like, "What's up, guys?" <laughs> Star's just going to kind of show her tattoo and just kind of nod, like she's oh. cool. Like <laughs> how did you get how did you get them to give you tattoo how did you and that and then so on because she's super interested in trouble Still. she's a fake <laughs> id <laughs> she's got like five fake ids I've oh eating, very good I've, I've been eating pine nuts and mushrooms for the past five months this ice cream is delicious <laughs> uh, ice cream will pick, pick up pretty great a root beer float and pour Pour it out for F. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There's some well, of that. Good cry. Hey, can I? <laughs> Sorry, can I? Can I perhaps 
uh, talk a little bit about the Eternal Mind. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, as this uh, this is gonna sound a little creepy. As this meeting's going on, I think a young streamer is probably walking past, and uh, it's not the Eternal Mind. It's not the Eternal Mind, but the Eternal Mind is kind of jacked into the stream. And as the stream is like talking to someone, he's kind of just wherever he is in the world, he's kind of creepily watching, nostalgic, not because he knows <laughs> the team, but because Raph was friends with them and he he feels like a little bit of that connection. So just creepily watching this until the streamer obviously moves on, then he goes back to business. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is super creepy. <laughs> Super but, dogs, man. <laughs> but, but also sweet, yeah. So, IDK, you are there surrounded by your friends. How you feeling? It's nice to have the band back together. Um, and it seems like we've we've all grown up a little bit. And uh, it's reaching the time where I have to make the decision as to whether or not I have to move on from this planet. And I'm wondering, you know, was this team a team that existed very briefly for, you know, eight episodes? Or you think we can get the band back together? You think we can make some good in the world as a team? Uh, Hacktivist will reach into her bag and pull out a file folder and she'll be like, funny you should say that. She'll lay it on the table and she'll flip it open. And she said, "Cause I," she'll say, because I have a job for us to do. And the, uh, the metal riff version of the theme song ramps up and the end credits start to roll thank y'all so stinking much for playing this game here this year with us um let's go through let's do our ending questions uh what was your favorite part where can we find you next new edition what are you doing next season here on the guild and Anything else that you got coming up that you want to plug? So, we're going to start with Kat. Hi, I'm Kat. I just played IDK. Um, I, oh God, I forgot all the questions. Well, my favorite part, my favorite part was just now when that, that, um, I like how we, we managed to kind of coalesce that epilogue all together because now it's, now it's up in the air. It's like it's it's wrapped up enough that like we don't have to continue on, but we can definitely continue on if we want to do. Um without it being weird or like having to resurrect things that you know. There's there's a lot of room to grow from there. Um but it it just kind of felt really organic the way it kind of interwove together. Um so I'm Kat. You can find me Kat and Schrodinger or Kat named Schrodinger. Schringer. Yeah. Schrodinger, like Erwin Schrodinger, like Schrodinger's cat. Um, you can find me in that most places. Um, so I'm not entirely sure. I got to talk to Raven about whether or not I'm in on that one thing next season. Um, but I am working on relaunch, relaunching my brand and doing stuff. So, uh, if you need any kind of like media production type stuff, like somebody to edit and manage, like your, your videos or stuff like that or producing, I do a lot of media production stuff. Um, and also I want to do this kind of stuff like, uh, streaming tabletop games. So, um, and I'm, I'm thinking about like a podcast. I don't know. It's all very like, first I have to like finish building my studio. 
and uh that's that should be happening in the next couple weeks so cat and schrodinger on twitter if you want to keep up with that i think that's all i've got nice very very cool um leland hey everybody i am leland slash leopold the just uh you can find me everywhere on twitter instagram facebook uh linkedin all at leopold the just um i've a i'm pretty much just a like a streamer in various channels mostly the black feather guild but i'm also a social media consultant for a bunch of other different companies where i just sort of work behind the scenes and run their social media spaces so not really re- re- not much recognition in in that but <laughs> but uh that's why i'm trying to stream more but um as far as what i enjoyed about the game my favorite part specifically was uh uh probably stace's uh epilogue i really enjoyed because it was like kind of like i don't know i just had i just like envisioned it perfectly i don't know i can't really describe why i liked it the most other than like it was like i've i i just like my imagination really honed in on it very well and just like the whole walking into the office thing i don't know i just imagined it everything everybody else's was great too don't get me wrong uh but that one just i don't know lasting memory especially just like kind of like the evolution of that character like just the bratty character and the bratty kid like it's pretty cool uh i also enjoyed um just just the mental image of, of us all just like hacking at this thing at the bottom and me trying to climb up his butt and then and then like our nuclear powered friend just going in and offing himself in the inside of it um it was just an epic way to take down a boss. So. Uh, but all that was great. As far as what you can, uh, where you can find me uh, next season on this channel, I'm going to, in the same exact time slot from um, 7 to 10 p.m. Central, I'm going to be running my very first campaign online. It's going to be a Zweihander campaign. Uh, it's going to be nautical uh, horror uh and it's i'm pretty excited uh i'm gonna probably fumble through the rules a bit but other than that you know i've been i've been running games for a while so that's not really the problem it's just more or less running on streams probably gonna be the only hill i have to climb but i've been playing on stream enough so i think it'll be all right but look forward to it uh it's gonna be uh it's titled uh in the mouth of the beast below it's gonna be pretty cool i've been doing some prep lately and i'm very excited oh and uh Nikki and Stace and Lance of this group are all members of that group as well. So you'll see them in the same time slot. Nice. Starting in January. Very cool. Stace. Oh man, my favorite part. That's really tough. I think that I just have to be very, I mean, the epilogue was great and I love uh, that raf was woven in kind of through the internal mind as well um i thought that was pretty cool uh i like how all the characters reacted but the to to the circumstances of the game right i think we all recognize that not very many would be super okay after that happened um and then uh but really the boss fight like if you think about it and i always try to imagine these things very cinematically because it's superhero game right just like everything that went down um with you know there was a black hole finale there were chainsaws explosions it was it was pretty rad so uh, i i really liked that boss fight it felt very culminative that's a word um so uh and i have to say that in for an eight episode campaign i feel like a lot was packed in and and a lot was done and um i i feel like that it went very well and that it was a great story so just shout out to the whole whole campaign and thank you for that matt Uh, as far as where i can be found after this like uh previously said i will be here same bat time same bat channel playing zweihander with a few of these folks 
looking forward to it very much. And also, as always, I am a cast member on the weekly actual play podcast, uh, Explorers Wanted. We play Numenera. I play a super chill, chill fighter type named Nyx. Um, and we're coming up on our season break, so a good time to jump in and catch up on the first season if you would like to. We're also going to do a recap for season two, and in between, you're going to get to hear us play a few different settings and systems if you're into one shots uh, and you want to check out cypher and, and a little bit of fate if you want to check out the secret of cats that's really cool setting we did it <laughs> um so yeah uh i'll drop that link in the chat and that drops every wednesday nikki um <laughs> i forgot the questions <laughs> uh favorite who part? are you uh everyone <laughs> no no that's everyone Matt, that played Matt my Matt favorite part too that's a good answer <laughs> um I, I can't believe i forgot the questions uh favorite part <laughs> where can we find you next uh, what are you doing on the guild next season and anything else you want to plug? Um, I don't, I never know what my favorite part was. Um, I guess, well, I, I like the epilogue, but I'm, it was kind of sad that Raph wasn't there. And that we're also missing a whole team member. <laughs> Another one. I guess um, I guess it was kind of like the. I like that the team is together, even though the whole team didn't make it. If that makes any sense. Um, and of course, the black hole. <laughs> it's always fun. They need to make like a a chainsaw black hole gun. <laughs> I guess they all get one at the last episode again. No. Did they last or did they like disappear? Mm, that's going to be a good question, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a bunch of teenage superheroes running around with chainsaws that shoot chainsaws. <laughs> the chainsaw gang. <laughs> I mean, it's all about... <laughs> It's like a smaller version of a chainsaw without the, the spinning blade thing. It's just kind of a... <laughs> it's so kind of like a back and forthy kind of blade. <laughs> it's a great Bible. I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> um, next season, I am in this Y-Hender game and... Um, Star Wars game, and I am on two games on um, action fiction, and I am, I really like playing games, so I'm always looking for more, <laughs> so you'll probably see me other places because I just can't not play, um, and I don't know what else to promote, <laughs> so thank you all. Awesome, and Mr. Parr. Oh boy, I'm last. Uh, okay. Favorite part, favorite part, favorite part. Um, hmm. The whole thing? <laughs> Just the, the whole thing? I mean, I, I do kind of love the just black hole moment where we are just going to summon a. <laughs> black hole right here in the middle of the bay and hope it all works out. <laughs> so that was quite fantastic. Um, I do want to do a, first, a personal favorite part because back in uh, back in the Nightmare episode when I was describing rafts, that is the closest I've come to actually shedding a tear on stream. Which was it was a... No, it wasn't anything bad, but I felt, I was very joyful because I felt so connected to the character in that moment when I have to, I'm just describing how he's sitting there on the bench and just all the things he's forgetting. It was really the first moment. I don't think anyone even noticed. So now you know. 
But if you look back, uh, yeah, I was starting to get a little teary eyed there. I was describing, I was really, I was really digging into the emotions, which I think is the first time it's really happened on stream. That was really a great uh, and fun personal moment for me. Uh, yeah, next season, Star Wars is Vihander. I'll be jumping into two new systems that I've never played before, which I think is always fun. Always looking to try more systems and uh, spread that TTRPG knowledge. Knowledge. And you can find me uh, on Twitch at uh, Mr. Parr, M I S T E R Parr. And you can find me on Twitter at Mr. Parr for E because somebody took Mr. Parr. Very, very cool. Um, so the was it the other raft? Was it the other raft that took Mr. Parr? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that Maybe. jerk. Uh, I forgot two very important things whenever my turn came along uh, to list uh, what I was doing next season. So I'm mm -hmm. also in... <laughs> uh, Raven is also in, our, in the Zweihander game, the person whose channel this is. Someone I forgot to mention which is uh stupid uh, <laughs> to say the least but anyway so that's also awesome and i'm also in a campaign uh that is based on the video game subnautica that raven will be running uh called water and we're actually going to be going into our second season that's going to be on tuesdays around the same time so anyway sorry about that no you're good uh <laughs> So um, the first bit of the credits end. All of the actors' names have passed by in gloriously animated fashion. The screen goes black for a second. And when it comes back, there is... We're looking at the door to a room. It looks vaguely like a hospital. Uh maybe a bit too shadowy in places uh, with some weird tech in some other areas. Um, and a man steps up to the door. It was the guy from the summer camp back in episode one, Aram's dad. And Romulus steps up next to him. And they both look through the window into a room that the camera can't see. And Romulus asks him, just goes, hmm. So who took Aram? And he looks over at her and just goes, we don't know. And none of us can feel his thoughts anymore. The shadows have run away with him. And then the proper credits start to roll. I am Matt. Yes. I have been the GM of this game. Thank you all so much for playing. Um, gosh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite parts were the epilogues in this episode. They really were. Like This whole episode has been a lot of fun. This whole season has been a lot of fun. But watching y'all tell the story of your characters beyond this moment I always enjoy that stuff. And y'all did so good um, with giving your characters like emotional consequences. I love that stuff. Y'all did so great with that. Um, y'all can find me uh, next. Uh, I stream on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I'm taking um, most of the next two weeks off for holiday stuff. Um, I am streaming on Monday, but then the next time I stream will be in the new year. Um, you can also find me on my podcast, Hard to Reboot. We just had an episode drop today. Uh, that was the first part of our uh, four-year-long ongoing season where every year we take three months and we dedicate it to three different ongoing projects. And this one is our superhero universe that I would quite literally give a kidney to see actually made into a comic book. So... Um, uh, my Twitch is Jam Game Streams. Um, so yeah, that's Hard Reboot. They dropped that episode today. You can find that on my Twitter, at Matt Hoadley. And next season here on the Guild, I'm also going to be in the Star Wars game, uh, which I am so excited for. 
I get to play a Mandalorian. Uh, I'm pumped. And I'm also going to be in a time traveling game that I'm very excited for. So uh, you can catch me next season here on the guild for that. And um, yeah, that's all I have to plug, which means that the proper credits have wrapped up. And before the lights come up in the theater, which means that the proper credits have wrapped up, the screen fades to black again and then fades back in with a view of a grass-covered hill overlooking a lake. There is a long green stalk that has grown up, and at the very tip of it, an orchid blossom slowly opens up. But you don't get to see what color it is yet. And that is where School Days ends. Thank you all so much. And I am going to hand this back over to Raven. Thanks so much. That was fantastic. I absolutely loved watching all of that. Um, I, I'm very much looking forward to finding out more about this this orchid and, and all of these characters and stuff at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, we're going to go on a raid here in just a second. Uh, a couple things to uh, touch on before uh, we do. Um, one, uh, thanks to sponsors Grinding Coffee Company, Fundamental RPG, and Intrepid. Um, for Fundamental RPG, there is the pre-order available for second edition. Right now, there's still uh, copies left for uh, uh, PDF format and paperback. Um, definitely check out that link. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool system, and uh, it's uh, what a couple of the games uh, this season and next season run on uh, so links there in the chat it's just coffee.com slash raven slash shop uh, you can find the intrepid products there as well um, and yeah thanks so much to everybody uh, matt for running this game everybody else for playing everybody that watched and everything um, the whole thing was absolutely a ton of fun um, next for the guild um, we're also going to be taking a bit of a break for, for holidays and so that I can get stuff ready for next season. Um, so there will be some video game streams uh, between now and the, the first of the year, um, playing various things, probably Phasmophobia and Among Us and stuff like that. I'll tweet about that, so definitely uh, follow on Twitter. Uh, it's there on the screen. Uh, um, and... Uh, yeah, so that'll be happening sporadically, and then we'll be back January 2nd for Season 3 of Animus. That'll be the first show, um, along with a bunch of other ones that uh, you heard mentioned here tonight. Um, but yeah, we're going to go on a raid for now. There's our raid cry in chat, and we're going to go raid with a brick. Uh, that is Ray's channel. She is fantastic. Definitely give her a follow if you're not doing so already. And uh, we will see you uh, in the near future. Bye, everybody.